dear students welcome to all of you today we are going to discuss topic nutrition in bacteria now as all of us are aware of the fact that the environment around us has a fascinating world of microorganisms which affect our life directly or indirectly the existence of microbial world was unknown until the invention of microscope at the beginning of 17th century which opened the realm of microorganisms to systematic scientific exploration it was antony van leeuwenhoek a dutch cloth merchant he was the first to give an illustrated description of microorganisms the thousands of microscopic organisms that he saw in a drop of water were collectively named by him as animal cules microbial cells are structurally complex and carry out numerous functions in order to construct a new cellular components and to do cellular work organisms must have a continuous supply of inputs in the form of raw materials or nutrients and a source of energy nutrients are the substances used in biosynthesis and energy release and therefore are required for microbial growth analysis of microbial cell composition shows that or 95% of cell dry weight is made up of a few major elements such as carbon oxygen hydrogen nitrogen sulfur phosphorus potassium calcium magnesium and iron these are called macro elements or macronutrients because they are required by microorganisms in relatively large amounts the first six such as carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen sulfur and phosphorus are the components of nutrients like carbohydrates lipids proteins and nucleic acids well the remaining four macro elements exist in the cell as cations and play a variety of roles for example potassium ion is required for activity by a large number of enzymes including some of those involved in protein synthesis calcium among other functions contributes to the heat resistance of bacterial endospores in addition to macro elements all microorganisms require several nutrients in very small amounts these are called micronutrients or trace elements the micronutrients such as manganese zinc cobalt molybdenum nickel and copper they are needed by most cells micronutrients are normally a part of enzymes and cofactors and they aid in the catalysis of reactions and maintenance of protein structure for example zinc ion is present at the active site of some enzymes but can also be involved in the association of regulatory and catalytic subunits like other living cells bacteria they require nutrients and suitable environment for growth and cell division the minimal nutritional requirements comprise of sources of carbon nitrogen hydrogen oxygen and some inorganic salts on the basis of synthesizing capability they may be autotrophs 
and heterotrophs. Now let us discuss about autotropic bacteria. Now autotropic bacteria, they are those bacteria which are capable of synthesizing their food by themselves from organic and inorganic substances. And these bacteria are called autotropic bacteria. The autotrophs can be divided further into two subgroups on the basis of energy source they use such as phototrophs and chemotrophs. The division may also be based on the nature of substances oxidized and source for electrons. Now lithotrophs. Now as the word litho suggests, litho means rock and trop means eaters. So lithotrophs are rock eaters. These lithotrophs they utilize inorganic substances as their electron source. Now organotrophs. The organotrophs they oxidize organic matter for their energy. Now despite the great metabolic diversity seen in microorganisms, most may be, may be placed in one of the five nutritional classes based on primary source of carbon, energy and electrons. Now first of all photosynthetic bacteria. These are also known as photoautotropic or photolithotropic bacteria. Like higher plants, they are capable of converting a radiant energy into chemical energy and have CO2, I mean carbon dioxide as their carbon source. They are mostly free living, non-parasitic bacteria and are capable of independent existence in the environment such as soil and water. Now photoautotropic bacteria are of following types. Number one, green sulfur bacteria. These are small, non-motile, rod-shaped bacteria which are strictly anaerobic photoautotrophs. Their photosynthetic pigment is chlorobium chlorophyll which is located in the invagination of cytoplasmic membrane. These bacteria use hydrogen sulfide or other reduced inorganic sulfur compounds such as sulfate or sulfide as electron donor. Elemental sulfur formed as a byproduct in this process is deposited extracellularly. Now we have one more group of bacteria which we call purple sulfur bacteria. These are also autotrophs and their photosynthetic pigments are bacterial chlorophyll A and or B. The reducing power is provided by hydrogen sulfide which is oxidized anaerobically via elemental sulfur to sulfate. The sulfur is deposited in them intracellularly or extracellularly in ectothiorhodospira. Some photosynthetic bacteria use organic matter as their electron donor and carbon source. These photoorganotropic heterotrophs or which we, we also call them photoorganoheterotrophs, they are common inhabitants of polluted lakes and streams. We have one more type of bacteria which we call non-sulfur purple bacteria. These are motile bacteria which do not produce gas vacuoles and never accumulate sulfur within the cell. Their photosynthetic pigment is also bacterial chlorophyll. In their metabolism, some organic compounds replace sulfur and the extent of carbon dioxide reduction depends upon the organic substrate. When the substrate is reduced more than the cell material, I mean when the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen 
is greater than 2 to 1, the excess hydrogen is used to reduce CO2, I mean carbon dioxide. On the other hand, if there is greater oxidation of the substrate, carbon dioxide is given off just as in respiration. Now we have one more type of bacteria which we call prochloron. Species of the genus prochloron are basically oxyphotobacteria or oxygenic photosynthetic prokaryotes. They are the most prominent in tropical waters as she secretes. The photosynthetic pigment composition of prochloron has similar characteristics of both cyanobacteria and chlorophyta. Although a particular species usually belongs in only one of the nutritional classes, some show great metabolic flexibility and alter their metabolic patterns in response to environmental changes. For example, many purple non-sulfur bacteria act as photoorganotropic heterotrophs in the absence of oxygen, but oxidize organic molecules and functions chemoorganotropically at normal oxygen levels. This sort of flexibility seems complex, yet it gives these microbes a definite advantage if environmental conditions frequently change. Next we have chemosynthetic bacteria. Chemosynthetic or chemotropic bacteria are most abundant and are important geochemical agents. These are non-photosynthetic but autotropic bacteria. Such bacteria derive energy and electrons from ammonia, nitrate, nitrite, ferrous ions, hydrogen sulfide and other inorganic compounds for the synth synthesis of their food. Hence they are called chemolithotropes or chemolithoautotrophs. For example, bacteria of the genus Nitrosomonas use ammonia as their electron source, obtaining energy by oxidizing ammonia to nitrite. Chemolithotrophs contribute greatly to chemical transformation of elements. For example, conversion of ammonia to nitrite or sulfur to sulfate that continually occur in the ecosystem. Many other chemotropic bacteria use organic compounds such as sugars and amino acids as electron donors and are therefore chemoorganotrophs or chemoorganoheterotrophs. Now certain bacteria can grow as either chemolithotrophs or chemoorganotrophs. For example, Pseudomonas pseudoflava can use either the organic compound glucose or the inorganic compound hydrogen as its source of electrons. Now on the basis of substrate specificity, chemoautotrophs can be classified into following four groups. First sulfur bacteria. Such bacteria occur in sulfur containing terrestrial and aquatic environments. They derive energy by oxidation of reduced sulfur compounds. Then we have iron bacteria. These bacteria such as Cipherotilus, Gallionella, Ferrobacillus and Leptothrix, they form natural colonies in freshwater ponds and springs with high contents of reduced sulfur salts. They oxidize ferrous compounds into ferric forms and the energy rele released in this process is utilized in the synthesis of organic compounds. Then we have hydrogen bacteria. Many species of chemoautotropic bacteria have the ability to grow with molecular hydrogen. They oxidize molecular hydrogen and in this process water and energy are obtained. The common hydrogen ox oxidizing bacteria are Pseudomonas sacrophila, Pseudomonas facilis, alkali genes eutrophs, Paracoccus 
denitrificans. Then we have one more nitrifying bacteria. These are basically soil borne obligate autotrophs which are incapable of growing in the absence of specific inorganic energy source. They oxidize ammonia to nitrate and help greatly in the economy of nitrogen in nature. The nitrification process is carried out in two steps. Each step by a very specialized group of bacteria. The first step involves oxidation of ammonia to nitrite with the help of nitrosomonas. Then we have another group of bacteria which we call heterotropic bacteria. These bacteria obtain their ready-made food from any organic source. They can be distinguished into three major nutritional categories. Number one, parasitic bacteria. Now, parasitic bacteria, they are those bacteria which feed on living organisms and are known as parasitic bacteria. The organisms from which parasitic bacteria obtain their food, they are known as hosts. Some parasitic bacteria are known to cause disease in plants such as citrus canker and in case of animals such as pneumonia, typhoid and such bacteria I mean which cause disease in plants or animals they are called pathogenic bacteria. Now we have one more group of bacteria which we call saprophytic bacteria. These bacteria grow on dead and decaying organic matter. They obtain their food by decomposing the organic molecules into simple inorganic constituents. The decomposition of carbohydrates and proteins by saprophytic bacteria is technically known as fermentation and putrefaction respectively. Breakdown of sugars by yeast is a common example of fermentation. In this process, carbon dioxide is released. Similarly, lactic acid fermentation of milk is carried out by lactic acid bacteria such as lactobacillus. Now in putrefaction, reduction of proteins to peptone, polypeptide, peptides and amino acid takes place by enzymes secreted by anaerobic bacteria. This process does not require oxygen, but many saprophytic bacteria which break down amino acids into methane, carbon dioxide, ammonia, hydrogen and nitrogen do require oxygen. Now we have one more type of bacteria which we call symbiotic bacteria. Those bacteria which grow in close, I mean beneficial association with other living organisms are known as symbiotic bacteria. In terms of their association with the host, symbiotic bacteria may be ectosymbionts. I mean, when bacteria live on the surface of the host or endosymbionts, that is, when bacteria live inside the host tissue. The bacteria inhabiting intestines of man and animals are good examples of symbiotic bacteria. The enzymes secreted by bacteria are helpful in the digestion of cellulose and in return they obtain their food from the host. Similarly, root nodule bacteria such as rhizobium which is present in the roots of leguminous plants fix atmospheric nitrogen to augment their nitrogen supply and in return the plants provide them shelter and nourishment in the form of carbohydrates. Dear students, I hope you might have understood the process of nutrition in bacteria, the various nutrition groups of bacteria and their characteristics. Thank you very much.